Welcome back to Scorecast Sense. It's Tim and Jacko, and today we are looking at the L sit to handstand. <laughs> So it's a pretty complex movement, but we're going to break it down for you. It might seem impossible at the start, but when we take it into these different chunks, you're going to see that we can actually help you to redefine your impossible. We've got the L-sit and we've got the handstand as the start and the end position, but we're going to look at how we can use that nice frog stand that we like in the middle and how we can build from the bottom up as well as the top down and meet somewhere in the middle to help you with your L-sit to handstand. Well, let's start with the L-sit, really nice stable points for us to get confident on the bars, our feet off the ground. So Jacko is just going to take a normal grip and then he's going to sit into this position and the real key to the L-sit is just like in a dip at the top position, you've got to keep pushing down and stay high. What you don't want to do is sink and allow those shoulders to come up towards the ears. So pushing down hard, keeping that height, that's going to be so important as we transition. This is our short position. The longer position we extend out puts more weight away from the body, which puts more stress on the midsection than the core. If when you extend those legs out, you straighten them out, you might find the hip flexors have a little bit of a, a bit of a moan at you, but if, you, if that's the case, you need a little bit of release work or you start to play around with some different variations. So the next phase of putting this movement together is the frog stand. Now just a, it's worth just noting that the grip changes a little bit. When we're doing a frog stand on the floor, we use the fingertips and we're using this kind of gr clawing gripping movement. On the bar, it's a bit like an old school joystick where Jacko's gonna move backwards and forwards to make the corrections in his body. So it's, you'll feel that. It actually requires less fine motor control than what you do on the floor. You've got a bit of more room for play in this. So otherwise the same principle applies. He's gonna try and get his knees up on the back of his elbows. So again, get up top of a stable pair of parallettes and he puts his foot up first, brings up the other one. This is a pretty stable position here. And then he's just gonna bend the elbows, put the knees on the back and then rock forward. And you can see straight away, he's starting to make those adjustments from the hand to keep that balance. Key point, keep the hips high. We need to have that confidence in the shoulder to start to get inverted because ultimately we've got to extend those legs upwards to finish off that handstand movement. So we're going to take the confidence that we built in the frog stand and now going to try and get into a full handstand position using the parallettes. Same thing applies with the corrections through the hand and the wrist just to keep it stable. One thing you need to be aware of though, when you've got the parallettes close to the wall and we're going to do a kick up into a handstand, because the hand is higher, you've got to work harder to get the hips over. So you're really going to have to have confidence in that kick up and really drive yourself up to get yourself into that higher elevated position. Same principles apply now. We're just going to keep it nice and strong in the shoulders, driving the hands towards the ground into the bars. Somebody stays uh, locked in, trying to make ourselves nice and long, and Jacko is just going to pull his feet off the wall and making those corrections with the hands to try and keep the alignment. That's the end of our movement that we're aiming towards. We've now got a few progressions along the way to help you to piece those three things together. Once you're confident with those three positions, the L-sit, the frog stand and the handstand, we need to start to look at how we link some of these together. And to start with, we're going to look at the frog into the L-sit. And you might be like, well, that's the other way around. Well, we're working on some of the eccentric strength so that you can build up some of that strength to come through. So it's going to be easier for you to do this than the other way. So takes the knees off, holds, doesn't fall down, control slowly through five seconds if we can, then down into that L-sit for a nice little pause put the feet back down on the floor, step back up into it again. So the idea being he's not, he's keeping um, control, maintaining tension. He's controlling this rotation and this lowering position. That's going to build up the strength to be able to do the exact opposite on the concentric. If you just fall down, then one, you might hurt yourself and two, you're not going to build any strength. The next transition is to practice a frog stand into handstand. Now, I'm not gonna lie, it gets exciting around about this point because we're starting to get confident being upside down, away from the floor. All of a sudden, our focus point is not in between our hands with our hands on the ground. We've got to readjust and being further away from the ground makes this a little bit more exciting. So, Jacko gets into his frog stand position. All that's gonna happen is the same thing from a transition perspective. He's just gotta do that work to get the hips up, stacked up on top. And then he's working the whole time in that balanced position, just making the corrections to keep them lined up as he opens up and extends the legs overhead. Keeping the midsection locked in, the same cues we practiced up against the wall, but use that floor as a focus point, feel that balance. And if you've got it to come back down, you get an opportunity to work the eccentric, loads of strength development in that simple transition. The penultimate piece of the puzzle is getting from the bottom position into then that middle part where we're trying to get to is that frog. And this is the hardest point from a strength point of view. So Tim's gonna start in his L-sit and then it's as he goes round, he's got to try and keep these shoulders nice and high so he can keep his bum high enough to be able to then get his knees onto his elbows. 
and he can rep that control back down. If you, if you go, um, when you rotate round, if he doesn't get that height and crumples down, what you're gonna find is, from here, if he starts sinking down and bending too much, he then can't get the hip high enough and he can't get the uh, knees high enough to get them on top of the elbows. It's all about this hip position, so he keeps the hip high enough so that he can put them on there. Then if he's got that position and he's already done his frog to handstand, it's then a case of just linking the two together without need, you don't need to pause in the middle with your, your knees on your elbows, you're just gonna work your way all the way through that full movement. So we appreciate that might not be much of a beginner's um, tutorial for you, but some of the uh, exercises at the start, like the frog stand on the parallel bars, getting yourself up elevated off the floor is one you can start with. The L-sit position is something you can start working with. So there is a little bit of something for everybody in that workout. Tim. <laughs> the hardest bit about that is that transition phase. So like Jacko says, work in those areas where you feel like you can build up those individual components, but that pressing out, keeping that straight arm strength as you rotate the hips up on top of your shoulders, that's gonna take a little bit of practice. And if you wanna go back and have a look at some a video with a little bit more help on this one, we've got a great transition of frog stand to handstand video that we've recorded using a band, which is gonna help you to develop some of that strength. So check that one out as well. Yeah, and if you've seen any of our other handstand stuff like that too, or any of the other ones, there's a big key part of it is where that hip is in relation to your shoulder and the strength to be able to put it where you need to for that alignment. So just like Shakira used to say, those hips don't lie, Tim. There is nothing else I can say. Until next week. Class dismissed.